Another dreary day here in southeast Alaska. Thick clouds, dark day, steady rain. The wind quit a little while ago this morning. It was blowing this morning, but it quit a little while ago. So it's not quite as bad as it was. And it's not as heavy a rain as what we've been getting. Probably rain about an inch today, I suppose. Fortunately, we don't get the wind that they get in some of the other places in southeast Alaska. Ketchikan and Juneau, especially Sitka and the outside coast, they got probably hurricane force winds the last few days. Forecast is for it just to keep continuing on for the foreseeable future. There's just a whole bunch of storms coming in off the Pacific. So we're getting lots of rain, lots of dreary weather. Fortunately, it's not snow. The temperature's been holding mid-30s to upper 30s at night and the upper 30s to lower 40s in the daytime. So say no snow here. I think the snow in the mountains in the coast range over there up higher, but I don't know what the snow level is right now. At least we don't have to shovel snow. All the snow is gone around here. There's just a few little nuggets left of uh, the berms that I plowed up, but that's almost all gone. Anyway, that's not too bad. I don't mind the not having any snow. Uh, I got a fire going in the shop just a little bit ago. I didn't have one yesterday. It was working mostly out here on the outer shop. I don't get it the advantage of the fire anyway, so it, and it's warm enough that I didn't really need it too bad. But it gets so damp, everything's so damp that I need to get a fire going every once in a while just to keep it dried out in here. I'm still working on this uh, doggone sawmill. I got the blade off yesterday. I had to cut that nut off with the torch and it came hard even then. Anyway, we got that blade off of there and I uh, got that blade guard off. So well, there's the blade and there's the uh, lower blade guard, the swing guard. Now I thought that thing was just captured in there on that shaft behind the blade and just kind of floated in there and would come off when the when the blade came off but it's got this bracket on on there that it floats on that it swings on and this bracket you got ears on it and it's tied into those that uh, lower bearing uh, for that main shaft so I had to take the bolts out for that main shaft but the more I look at this you know I'd as I said earlier I'd hope to be able to just uh, do a couple of things on this and get it running and get to milling with it uh, and then I started seeing stuff that needed to be cleaned up and fixed and I was worried about the bearings and stuff in here so now that I'm getting more and more of it exposed I'm pretty sure that I'm doing the right thing and getting this taken apart so I pulled a, a shield off the bottom here yesterday too it fits on here that uh, guards uh, all these pulleys and all this stuff here from the sawdust from this edger blade and the main blade and it gives me better access in there now I can see but I see all those pulleys are pretty rusty we've got this uh, guide roller here that helps twist those uh, belts so they go 90 degrees for coming off that main shaft this is where they come off the main shaft then they twist 90 degrees and go over here onto the edger shaft and there's another guide roller right there and those are set at an angle so that they pull those belts in and help them track right on those pulleys and those are kind of rough shape so you have to do with polishing those up I still don't know how that bearing is there on that main shaft uh, but it looks like I'm going to take everything apart anyway like I said all these pulleys and stuff have got rust on them and that just eats those belts up I mean eventually they'll polish up but in the meantime it just eats those belts up so here's the outer bearing for this main shaft and there's another collar right there that the blade rides on and this is just a pillow block bearing here there's another identical one up here on the top and they say that they're identical they have the same part number but it says in the uh, manual that they've been ground uh, off set so they are become a pr proprietary bearing from the company and they're, they're uh, polarized one of them has to go on the outside here and one of them goes on the inside so I don't know why they're ground that way but obviously somebody knows so anyway you can't just replace them with an off-the-shelf bearing uh, maybe that shaft gets turned at a little bit of an angle I see there's a an adjustment here for it for moving it back and forth that pulley 
uh, that bearing and I don't see a uh, reciprocal one up here on this top bearing that one just stays put those bearings are uh, I forget what they're called uh, they they kind of rotate they have the the uh, inner race can kind of rotate in on the on the bearings a little bit so they don't have to be perfectly aligned so I'm gonna have to determine the size of that shaft and the thread pitch on that and get a new nut for that but that's not too big of a deal I've got to get a whole bunch of new hardware anyway and I don't know how the bearings are going to turn out on here yet I still have to kind of get those off to see how free they are and what kind of shape they're in so this is the same thing over here on this bearing uh, this lower shaft for the idler or for the uh, edger blades but it's uh, not polarized they're just the standard bearings on the edger blades well, you can see up in there better now and like I said I'm not unhappy with my decision to break this thing down well I got just about everything stripped off of that carriage that hangs down from the bottom of it that I can and the only thing that's still hanging on there that can come off is that lumber drag back the bolt there that holds that in that's got a set screw in it that I can't get out I must have a groove in it or something because I can get that bolt to turn a little bit but it won't come out maybe there's a flat on it or something I don't know anyway I haven't been able to get that off of there that thing is still hanging out and still got quite a bit of weight hanging out over the side of that but without that blade on there and and uh, the blade guard and I had the main shafts both the the main shaft and the edger shaft and the edger blade and all of that other paraphernalia on there hopefully that's lightened that up and out enough now that i can get that to sit up right and it'll be easier that way to work on the rest of that there's bearings on the bottom on the on this rail here there's bearings both on both sides of that but the ones on this side here keep that thing from going off of that way and there was stops on the other side i took those off so I should be able to, to rock that up over, but those bearings on there, I think I'm going to want to change all of those bearings. I have to take those off of there. I have to take that carriage off of there to get those off, but there's still a few more parts and pieces on there on that carriage that uh, uh, probably should come off and get cleaned up. And, uh, these C clamps again and I can see about getting the rest of this stuff off of here. Uh, this is the speed control, the forward and reverse control and the and the speed control still that's on here. And, uh, and then this lever here is the one that cranks the uh, adjustable edger blade up and down. And then this one is the disengagement, the drive disengagement. Oh no, this is not the one for the edger blade. This is for the uh, for that guy, uh, the roller, the stabilizer roller. Okay. Okay, got it off the whole shebang. The whole shebang. All right. It can all come off as a unit. This little unit here, I'll have to see whether that's supposed to have oil in it or something for shock absorbing, but it sure doesn't do anything like now. And maybe just that it uh, uses this spring for pull down, I don't know. But this is what uh, the trip for the reverse, when the reverse lever trips, this is what goes on it. So the only thing left on here, other than a couple of bolts for holding down the uh, well, this is a tension bolt here for the uh, shaft, for the bearing, for the edger shaft. And then we got bolts over, a bolt here for holding down, or for a stop actually, for the engine when we put the engine on there. Uh, 
this is the only thing left on there. This is the crank there for that one uh, idler arm or that one stabilizer. And it's got, uh, I don't know how the west way, this one's welded on. It's got a collar on this end, it's welded on. And it's got a spring in there for spring tension. And it's got a collar on this end. Uh, so that's not going to come off of there unless I take this end here off. This end has got a threaded rod on it that's just held on with a pin, a roll pin. And so that won't come out. I'll have to clean all of the rust and crap off of this. So there's a worn spot on there where that was turning on something there. It's worn down quite a bit rubbing on something. Well, this just got a nut on it with a uh, bolt welded on it that attaches to that control rod that goes down through here to uh, move that one bearing, that stabilizer, in and out. I thought I could get this off without taking this pin out of here, but it looks like I'm going to have to take the, this uh, end off here, this threaded end. Well, this is what threads onto that shaft on there to and then this end goes into the lever on that arm. There's that. I don't want to use one of those anymore, I hope. So there's the end that uh, controls that rod. That just pinned onto that rod. Just a piece of all thread cut off, drilled out in the center for to fit over that rod. Now what I got to do is clean all the paint crap off of that rod so I can get that collar to slide down to the other end and slide off when I take the set screw out of it. got everything off of the carriage. I didn't think that was going to happen. But we got it all cleaned up except for set a couple of bolts here for adjustment points. This is the fair lead that that uh, string goes through that uh, goes down there for tripping the haulback, uh, lumber haulback or kickback. Hey baby girl. Hey Hana. Hey Hana. What are you doing? You getting ready to go for a truck? Huh? She'll go get in the car. Go get in the car. Go get in the car. So, anyhow, you can see that roller there has got some rust on it. Of course, this uh, track has got some rust on it too. The roller over on the other side is not even rolling. Bearing on the other side, so. So we'll get this carriage off of there and tipped over, I guess. That's a little bit high for a workbench, but uh, it'll work. We'll get that tipped over and get those bearings off there, those rollers off there. We got the carriage all disassembled on the top portion of it. Uh, took it off from the track and we tipped it over here. My son helped me tip it over here on top of the track so we could work on it some more. Uh, checking these bearings out and stuff on these rollers. Well, now I have access to these rollers and they're they're freely accessible they're not free this one here which is, goes underneath the rail on this off side the outside uh, that one turns pretty good the bottom one here which is the top one that rests on top of the rail it doesn't turn at all 
This one over here is a wide one that fits on the inboard side uh, on the track on the cutting side and, uh, and it's a wide track on that side so it's a wider roller here. And that one is kind of crunchy when it turns. Uh, it could just be because it's got crud in there or more probably the bearings are bad. Um, this one on the I guess it's actually the front side. This would be the back side because this thing is tipped over. I think, yeah, that's right. This is the side here that the edger blades go on. This is the side that faces the operator when you're operating. So that one's a little bit crunchy. This one here, oh, I got it to turn just a little bit here now, but it comes to a stop. So it's bound up for some reason, whether it's a bearing or something else jammed up in there between that roller and the uh, plate there where it stands on. This one here, which is the bottom roller, that one spins freely, but I can feel it's crunchy. Uh, it's dragging in there, and it's kind of loose, wobbly. Now on this bottom one, it spins free. I don't feel any crunchies in it. Get a little bit of wobble in it. I don't know whether that's in the bearing or in the mount here. So that's the next step is to take these bearings off of here and I'm just going to go ahead and get replacement bearings for all of them. Now these are steel tubes here, pipes or something like that. It's probably a big washer on the outside and a piece of pipe here with bearings pressed in on both sides of it on these, these big rollers here and these other rollers here are just bearings so, time to take that stuff apart. And these have got, uh, those almost look like one inch nuts on them. I'll get a wrench and see what they are. Now, yeah, they must be either 7 eighths or 13 sixteenths. Yeah, 7 eighths don't fit. 13 sixteenths fits like a glove. So, Yeah, this thing's just loose on here. So rather than putting a whole lot of pressure on everything, I think I'll just use the air air wrench on that. I'll go get that set up. I still need a wrench to hold hold them, keep them from spinning. Well, I think I said 13 sixteenths on those. I meant 15 sixteenths. Just a misstatement on my part, not a not a mistake. Say one drop, but some's good, more's better, right? It's so damp here, even though I've got drains and stuff on my airlines, I still get water in it. I have desiccate crystals and filters on this line, but it still gets water in it. bearing a shot and rocking on the rocking its race rocking and rolling in its race now these lower bolts here come some kind of a bastardized thing they've got a big head that is on the or a bolt on them they must have been turned down to a small nut they use a 9 16 on them hey bud what are you doing wolf hey bud hey Hodge okay that uh They're coming loose. It's spun and a... oh, that's got an eccentric in it. That's why it's like that. Um... Yeah, that one's crunchy. 
Oh, you don't say. You don't say. There, that's my boy. Yeah. You want to lay on this stinky thing? I don't know. You can go see if he doesn't usually like laying on. Or doesn't always like laying on those beds, but let's put it out there and see if he wants to go lay. Oh, he wants to be Oh, yeah, that's my boy. Oh, yeah, oh, oh. My boy. Oh, come here. Tim, come here. Honey, how'd you come? You didn't knock the camera over. Come here. Why? Oh, come here. You want something to eat? Something to eat? <laughs> you big old turkey. You big old turkey. You big old turkey. Well, I'm not sure exactly what they did there, but they've got this bolt coming through there. And it's on an eccentric, so you can adjust that, tighten it down. It sh probably shouldn't run tight against that rail, but you can loosen it up and tighten it down. That basically runs underneath here, keeps this whole rigmarole from tipping over. And uh, so they made that into kind of an eccentric. And I'm not sure whether they turned that uh, bolt down. Do that bolt a half inch. 5 8 bolt. Not sure whether they turned that bolt down to make it into a, an eccentric, but it kind of kind of looks like what they did maybe is is turn a bolt down, a 5 8 bolt down into, a, well, cut it off and drill the hole through it off center and then put, uh, what is that, 3 8 7 16 7 16 bolt through there off center and then welded the head down to it and they shaved both of the heads down so they don't stick out very far but the um, 7 16 bolt head there is welded down to the other one that looks like what they did oh yeah that one that one's bad bearings are bad on that one for sure okay well that's a place one bearing might as well replace them all anyhow so but that proves that the bearings were bad so the carriage here is disassembled right down to I think there's still two bolts in there for uh, stops that uh, I probably change those out too I was going to leave those in so that they're in the right spot, so you don't have to, didn't have to adjust everything when I put it back together, but that's, uh, everything's going to be changing, I guess, and put new bearings and all these things and stuff, it's all going to change anyway, so I guess there's no point in having those in there, you just have to go through the whole alignment process. Here's all the paraphernalia off of that carriage, and that's basically the operations of the sawmill, and of course you got the engine, which is the heart of it, but this is all the everything else except for the track but this is what goes on the carriage to make it all run well, of course we've got the main shaft here with the pulleys and that's quite a shiv they got there I got one two three four five uh, pulleys on that section or grooves in that section that's what feeds the uh, edger blades you got one, two, three, four, five, six on this side. This is what comes from the engine, and then there, I think there's a pulley that goes or a belt that goes off of here that runs all of the track uh, to run up and down. So this is this is the the main guts of it here. We got a collar on here on this shaft. So the nut on here. Let's see what they do with the nut. Here's Here's what's left of the nut. I couldn't get it to come loose and I wound up cutting it off. And you can see the groove in here where the plastic goes for the locking portion of the nut. So anyway, that's what's left of the nut. That and a bunch of dust out there on the floor. Outer shop there. So I measured this out. Well, I measured that nut out and that was, was two inches flange to flange on there would have taken a two inch wrench. I, I didn't have one. Of 
course I couldn't get it to move anyway with the pipe wrench so even after I cut it I still couldn't hardly get it to move. Now I'm going to have to get a thread chaser and chase those threads. So I measured this out. This shaft is an inch and three eighths. Battery's going dead on my calipers so it doesn't always and I had a whole bunch of batteries that I got someplace but now of course I can't find them. Yeah it's an inch and three eighths on the shaft and I checked the pitch of the threads with a pitch gauge here, the Starrett pitch gauge. Hey, I can be a name dropper like some of the other guys around with all their Starrett Mitutoyo and Brown and Sharp tools. Anyway, I checked it here with this and it's 12 pitch thread, 12 thre threads per inch. So I need to get a nut and a thread chaser for that to clean that up and to get a new nut on there. So this collar here, that doesn't turn, that must be pressed on. This bearing of course is pressed on. That bearing doesn't feel too bad there. Now there's no grease cirques on these bearings. And reading the manual they're a proprietary item because they have to take the bearings, or they do take the bearing theoretically and grind them at an angle, the race at an angle for some reason. I'm not sure why. Oh. Anyway, this is the other bearing. And this one doesn't feel too good. It spins free, but it's a little rough. So, I don't know whether you can hear that or not. You can hear it making noise there. Well, that one will get that one will get changed out and that's the inboard bearing so that one will probably have to come from uh, mobile dimension and I may just do both of them just for good measure I don't know usually when one thing goes bad it don't take very long for other parts to go bad too now here's the rollers that I just took off of the carriage and they've got bad bearings in them so I'll have to get the numbers off those bearings, press them out of there and uh, get new bearings for those rollers. Uh, I might get new bear, new uh, bolts here. This bolt actually is not too bad a shape. Let's see how badly it burred up. No, I didn't burr that one up when I beat it out of there looking to see if the bearing had spun on there but they hadn't spun on there so that's all right those should be okay and then these bearings are for the track on the other side and of course they're uh, bad they either got crunchies in them or this one's fairly smooth but it's a little bit stiff so. and now there's a bearing here this is what rides on the, the log to keep the track from bouncing up and down. And this bearing, surprisingly enough, is not in too bad a shape. It feels good. But there's another one over here on this other uh, stabilizer arm, and that one's froze up solid. I have to figure out how to get that one out of that arm there and put a new bearing in that. This is the edger shaft, and this is the adjustable edger blade. I haven't taken it off yet. You have to take the ends off of here, I guess. Take There's a bearing here on the end. That bearing, yeah, it's not very good. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I would better change it, I guess. This one up here is bad. This bearing is bad. Yeah, not good. So, and then this bearing, there's another bearing here. This is the bearing that the uh, yoke for the edger blade spins on. And that one, and I don't know what to do with that one take that apart and see if that just presses apart or if that's a special bearing because that's just got ears on it there and then this shiv here 
Yeah, it's pretty rusty. That one's pretty bad. And that's got one, two, three, four, five, five grooves on that shiv. That one's that one's gonna need some cleaning up. Maybe replacing, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, this bearing comes off of there. There's a collar on here with a a lock. It's a split collar on here. So that can come off. So there's gonna be some work on the press, I guess. got these. These are go on the machine and they go up against the belts because the belts all turn a little bit. They're not at a, they're not straight run belts. They, well the ones that go between the main shaft here and the edger shaft, they turn 90 degrees so they, there's two of these followers there that, that go on that belt to uh, help them track and uh, this one's got you know, let's see what it's got this one's got I don't know whether that's got bearings in it let's see what we got here I'll get some kind of a scraper and see if that's a bearing or if just a sleeve in there well, that's a sealed bearing, sealed bearings with a sleeve running between the two different bearings. Anyway, the outside of that's all rusty and that would chew up the outside of those belts. Both of those are the same. Yeah, this one's got, uh, this one's the same thing. It's got sealed bearings in it. Pretty rusty. And then we've got this is the driver. This attaches to the a plate on the carriage here. There's a bearing there. It's got a snap ring on it. And then this is the chain attaches to this. And then this is the uh, pinion gear that drives the carriage back and forth. And that bearing in there feels like it's bad. So then we got another one here. This one uh, goes on the main blade up on top. And then you've got a a belt here that uh, that's belt driven here that turns it and there's a bearing in there so that needs to be well the, the shiv there the pulley is is credit up so that needs to be worked on and then the, the guide here is yeah that's needs to be cleaned up too this thing here is what the uh, Plunger, the uh, little arm that drops the lumber drag back attaches to, it goes underneath the reverse arm to, I guess, I think, kind of cushion it coming down, but it doesn't feel like it's got much cushion left in it. Uh, let's see if that's got a seal on the end of it, got oil in it or what. It's got a seal on it. So that seal's probably bad. I don't know whether it's got oil in it or whether it's just air. There's a screw back here on this side to vent that. So, okay, so that's going to need some work. Everything needs work here. This was the shaft for adjusting that uh, stabilizer, the one stabilizer, and I got it off. But it's got some places in here where it got eight up pretty good some wear on it from either belts rubbing on it or vibration something rubbing on it there's three places on here where it's worn so I can weld those up and turn them down or grind them down or I can replace this this is just a what size is that 3 8 3 8 inch shaft well it's 3 8 inch rod this is the spacer. This goes on. Belt blade goes on, and then this goes on, and this goes on, and then you swap them around. Put this on here. If you put the bigger edger blade on there, those are just rusty. They just I'll sandblast those and clean those up. I didn't didn't touch those with the torch. Uh, one little mark here where I cut it with the torch, just a little bit maybe. Too bad considering. 
This is the actuator or deactuator, depending on how you want to term it. It's what takes the um, travel out of gear, forward and reverse travel. It's got a little dog clutch on there and that kicks it in and out. This is shaft for adjusting the. Oh, yeah, this one's for uh, adjusting this uh, adjustable edger, the floating edger up and down. That's what that is for. Uh, already forgetting. Now we got this arm. This is a trip arm. Now, this has got a ball bearing in here. This is a crunchy tube, but this rides on the down low and then when it comes to the end of the track there's a ramp coming up on it and as that comes up that raises this up and that trips the the um, lever out and stops the carriage from moving so that's what that does. We got all the belts these are the belts that were going for the edger blades and they don't look too bad they're a little stiff but they're not too bad these are the belts that go for the from the engine and this is what my first instinct was on those that those were kind of bad and they're pretty rough and on the outside of them especially where they where they rubbed up against that guide but uh, they're pretty they're, the other side doesn't look quite so bad but they're getting worn so I'm glad I got new blood belts now this is the shaft this goes down and this is what moves in and out to stop the uh, mill from bouncing around. This rides against the lumber uh, as you're cutting it to keep the edger blade from bouncing in and out. And this was really stiff. You can see how rusty that shaft was there. That fits down. There's a, a square tube welded onto the uh, carriage. And this fits down in that. And then you got a little uh, pin here that guides it to keep it lined up so this fits like, like this and then this arm up here is what that this bolt here it is fits in there the nut actually and then this section of all thread fits through that and this is pinned onto that one shaft there that and that's what turns and adjusts this back and forth in and out and that was that was stiff that wasn't working right so this has got a pin on it, a, a rivet on it here, and anyway, that's going to be needed to be cleaned up and uh, polished up. And then this bearing is this bearing is shot. I guess I already showed that. So well, this is the bracket here that attaches to the carriage, and this is what the forward and reverse lever um, operates on. And in it, this is a, a trip for it. Anyway, that's what it goes up and hooks onto, and then drops down. And then uh, you got a hook for it for here for when it's in neutral in between to hold it, so it doesn't go into reverse or forward. This was on the track, and this is what adjusts the the mill. Um, it actually adjusts the mill up and down no back and forth uh, for doing your depth of cut when you have the stanchions when it's on the stanchions I'm not going to be putting it on the stanchions so I'm not going to need that on there it was just getting bent up from being bounced around hanging out there so I took it off but I'll clean that up and then you've got a knurled section here that uh, they got a dial that comes down and rests against that and then that turns the dial to tell you how far over you're turning what what size lumber you're cutting, whether it's inch and a half or two inch or whatever. This is the rack for uh, raising and lowering that adjustable edger blade. And again, that thing was stiff as a cob there, so I just clean it up. It's it's not bent. No, it's straight. It's it's in good shape. There's no teeth gone on it or anything like that. It was just stiff, so we'll clean that up and. Uh, back together nothing wrong with that so here is the variable speed pulley you can see it's got springs on both sides of it and uh, this just there's some kind of way to adjust that but anyway that expands 
and contracts, goes in and out. And so when it's in like this, the belt's riding out farther and it's an effective, the pulley is effectively larger diameter and when it expands out, then the pulley is effectively a smaller diameter. And uh, well, that all looks like it's working, but well, that bearing's good. This bearing over here on this side is froze up and then it's got a shiv in here. There must be a belt that goes on that to, somehow to operate this to make it move. Anyway, and then here's a fair lead on here for that cable to come up through that for the reverse trip um, for the lumber drag back. And this is the speed adjust stuff here. Got a couple of shiv there, pulley, and flat pulley there. Arm. Anyway, this thing moves up and down and changes. Uh, tension on the belt which I guess which runs this that must be how that works don't know how that works exactly yet and here we got the main um, drive doohickey uh, yeah these pulleys need to be cleaned up the bearings don't feel too bad but as long as we're doing bearings we may be able to do them all so that's the um, shifts into forward and shifts into reverse and then there's the main drive uh, dog that looks like it's in pretty good shape but I have to get it cleaned up to make sure anyway that fits on there and that the spring pushes that out to normally keep that engaged and then uh, but it only pushes it out so far so that when you take that little lever and it pulls it out and that disengages this clutch which is what drives the this is the pinion gear for the rack here there it is right there it had a gear on it okay so that fits on there see that just spins normally on that shaft when it's pulled out and when it goes in then these, these little ears right here engage with the slots on the, the other one and, that, and a chain goes on that, and that's what drives the carriage back and forth up and down the track. So that's that on there. There's a few other odds and ends, brackets and pieces and things like that that uh, we'll clean up. And then, of course, you got the lumber gauges, and these bolt onto the bottom of the track. And that's what runs up against the, these ends here run up against the log or against the board, the cut face of it, the open face of it to stop the track from moving in. And that's what determines how deep of a cut you make when you're uh, cutting, whether it's a, a two by or a one and a half by or whatever. Um, so this is one, this one works. You've got an arm here with a spring on it and then they just paddle it sticks out and then that butts up against the, the face of cut face of the timber and stops it from the carriage from going in any farther and then when the mill comes by it that hits it knocks it out of the way okay I kind of figured that out in a way I kind of figured it out still don't have it completely figured out yet I really see it working I guess but uh, so that's all the paraphernalia off of that that stuff all cleaned up. I guess the first thing is going to be to, well, we'll clean as much stuff up as we can here so we can get numbers and stuff for those uh, pulleys and uh, and then some of the bolts, the hardware is going to have to be replaced. Some of this stuff uh, I'm not going to put rusty rusty old cruddy hardware back on so we'll get new stuff for, for some of this stuff all right, well, that's it for now for the Mobile Dimension Sawmill. She's all apart. Oh, yeah, this is the this is the yoke here. This is what the... Ah, good thing that didn't hit my toe. Or anything else valuable. This is the yoke that fits on that movable edger blade. And then this uh, rack fits in there in that yoke. That's what raises that uh, a 
adjustable edger blade up and down. No, no big deal there. 